Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Whims of Fate, where our nicheling gods are watching over our small tribe of the Whims and doing their best to throw unexpected outcomes, randomness, and extremely interesting stories into the legacy of this family. And I know it's been a little while since we've been here. Oh my gosh, this summer has been so ridiculously busy. And I hope you guys have been enjoying all of our other adventures over on our Pixel Biology community channel. Uh, heck, it has been quite exciting, but I promise you I have not forgotten about the whims, and we are ready to settle once more into the clouds as we watch over all of these little ones. And oh, we've got a lot of cute little fluffy tails! Oh my gosh, I didn't notice how many adorable stinky tails we have. This place must smell like a bunch of skunks. <laughs> But I am so happy to be back here, and I am, well, I say that with trepidation. I'm so happy to be back here, but I am very nervous because, guys, Mono is getting to the end of her life. If you guys need to know about the rules that we use for the Whims Challenge, or if you need to know about any of the previous episodes and the adventures and characters we have created, be sure to check out the video description for a link to our rules, a link to our amazing wiki that Professor Callium, our amazing niche-ologist, <laughs> happens to maintain wonderfully and also check out the playlist to the previous episodes because we're continuing right where we left off guys with Manu our tribe leader who is able to keep this tribe at a size of 14 about to pass away of old age uh, she only has five days left you guys and I am so nervous about that because 14 is such a wonderfully huge tribe size and anytime a tribe leader dies we have to reroll a number between 2 and 22 mm, 2 and 20 2 and 22 we might we might bump it up now and then just for fun um, but we have to reroll a number between 2 20 or 22 and see how many nichelings are allowed to stay in the tribe so we could end up having to like shrink our tribe down to just a couple couple nichelings, in which case I kind of wonder if we should leave the island, because two nichelings is not enough to defend ourselves from the killer barrenness here. But if we get 20 nichelings with whoever ends up inheriting the tribe, then we might try dominating this hardest of all islands and showing all of the killer barina what for. We're going to have to think about it. But Mono is getting older. She is 71 days old, currently pregnant with her mate Ducky, uh, Ducky's child. They just had Latari, who needs a new name. Uh, I'm actually going to name Latari. Let's name her Latea, because I think that's actually a very pretty name. Latea and oh man I just I don't know guys I don't know unfortunately they had a sickly child um but I'm hoping the next one will be healthy and I don't think is she do she gives birth in two days so this will be her very last baby uh and so whenever she passes away then that is when Pierre is actually going to end up taking over the tribe. I feel pretty confident to choose Pierre. He is glorious. He is amazing. Look at those blue feathers, his digging paw, his toxic body, his beautiful fluffy tail, his spots. You guys know what a sucker I am for a handsome spotted creature. Uh, and Pierre will be taking over the tribe and hopefully being able to get some winged genes going on with when she grows up because Iris is the very first non-related winged nicheling that we happen to have born in the tribe. So fingers crossed that Iris will be able to make it to adulthood and that she will be a great toxic bodied winged mate to be able to be with Pierre. I'm very hopeful about that but it may not be Iris because there might be many more children happening since we have Ivy and Trico here deeply in love. They they both have orange body. Uh, I do believe they're both toxic. Yeah, they're both toxic orange body. They both love each other deeply. They have really weird like little faces. One's platypus beaked. One is anteater nosed. I kind of feel like they suit each other so perfectly. We just have a tiny little like orange family and I love it. Oh my gosh. I wish they could eat coconuts because that would just make them so fruitful. But they're over here deeply in love. I have a feeling they're going to be having more children soon, so we might end up with even more winged children that Pierre could possibly have as mates, so we could get those wings into the sky. 
and otherwise we do have more wings over on this side with the return of Haril, who became a wanderer after he became an adult uh, and is probably about to set off to wander again but is going to leave our girl Sunny with a child because she was hoping to be able to have at least one child of her own. I think she is the last nicheling in our tribe with toxic fangs. Yes, she is. Unfortunately, all of our other toxic fang nichelings have passed on. So she's the last one with toxic fangs. She kind of has always dreamed about having a kid of her own. And Rihanna here, Rihanna is one of Mono's daughters, so Pierre's sister. Uh, and does that make her... And so she's also related to Hayil, but uh, you know, Rihanna, she's thinking, you know what, I, I kind of want to, I like those wings, and her brother Hayil has those wings, and what does he have given by the gods of fate? He has Hammertail and Big Nose. I wouldn't mind spreading that Hammertail gene more into the tribe. So Rihanna's kind of thinking maybe she'll have a half-sibling for Sunny's child and possibly be able to help raise those babies together. Uh, we gotta be careful though because we are at 14, which is our tribe limit, which means now that he's getting a little older, Little Eagle might start wandering around. We're gonna go ahead and actually let him wander, even though Ahmed is quite worry about, worried about that. We're gonna go ahead and let Eagle wander about, which gives us more room in the tribe. Uh, is he gonna go straight for that healing fruit, like first thing? Eagle, that's a little rude. Uh, but he's old enough to start wandering a bit. Very young for us to usually release, but I think that that'll be okay. And that gives us a spot for more babies. So, all right, that's kind of where we're at for the whole tribe. Uh, oh, and then Fox over here, he just wants to scout around. He might have some good genes, though. Uh, we might actually, I actually think he and Rihanna might have some interesting children. He's got toxic body and chestnut brown fur as the possible things that the gods of fate have given him to pass on. But mostly Fox is just a great scout. And I, I don't know if he's thought about, you know, mates and settling down. Uh, he was involved in the great killer and Berina attack that we just had. So maybe he just wants to make sure that everybody is safe. For now, I'm going to let him gather some fruit. Um, and then we're going to have... Let's take care of all of the, the pregnant ones and the babies first. So we'll have itty bitty little latte jump on down here. And then we'll have Almond be a good babysitter and stay nearby. Mono has a few days left to live. Um, so we're going to have Ducky come and grab some berries to share with her. And then Mono isn't going to have that baby for a couple more days. So we're going to let her come over and do a little digging right here. Whoops. Oh no, she attacked. I didn't mean to attack. Oh, I think she's going to apologize profusely. That is not what we meant to do. I am so sorry, Eagle. It was an accident. That was truly, truly an accident. I did not mean to attack Eagle. I was trying to dig and I saw scratchies and I was like, oh, that's digging. No, that was bopping Eagle across his little ant nose. I'm sorry, Eagle. And meanwhile, down here, Emmy also has the wing gene. Maybe these two will have a little boy she could have some babies with. That would be useful. All right. Oh man, and Emmy has got a bunch of termites all over her. Lick it with another animal to remove them. All right. Let's have Ivy come down. She she kind of helps to keep an eye on Emmy. Uh, Trico, you come over here to make sure everybody is safe and protect the baby, the bright orange baby from this doom from above. And then we're gonna come and lick off. Like I think Ivy is going to enjoy all of those ants. Ivy and Emmy are just having a good time with the termites. These were bad termites, like they're the swarmy kind. Um, but the whole crew is here and Trico will laugh a little bit and tell his mate Ivy how adorable he thinks it is that she was eating all of those those termites. So we're going after the red termites. Might as well just remove them. I think if we pull them off before they attack, yeah, look at that! Then you don't have to worry, so as long as you have more than one nicheling around, or at least enough nichelings that you'll never have the termite swarming, then you're fine. Uh, also, I almost forgot Trico. He has figured out how to fight the killer Berina by letting them attack him so that they become covered in the poison that covers his body. Uh, which means that we need to find him a healing fruit, which means, Eagle, that was really not cool that you ate that one. Heckin'. 
Oh, well, at least we have enough room for babies now. All right, and we're gonna have Pierre who can dig, but that's about it. Let's have Pierre come over and he's going to help out with digging over in our famous potato field where for some reason this section of the island is usually covered in an endless bounty of like spuds slash roots to dig up. He'll come over here and he will help out with this side and then down here we're thinking babies and also clearing out the rest of this zone. Uh, yeah, also clearing out this area and making a clear run to the exit because if we ever do get the tribe size so small, if something devastating ever happens, then the gods of randomness decreed that this is the port that we actually need to exit out of to the new island because in the whims of fate, we have to roll the, uh, the dice of destiny and it picks which port we get to exit and it picked this one this time. All right. So let's come on down. And I do think that Rihanna will kind of come down. Um, Harrell doesn't have to stay super long too because he doesn't even have like the ability to really attack things. So I think that Rihanna is gonna jump down and Harrell might kind of preen his feathers at her suggestion. Let's make sure, oh, she hasn't been blessed by the gods of fate yet. This may decide it. I think they're kind of like fluttering feathers at each other, thinking about it. Uh, but I have to pull up the random Nishling mutation generator by the amazing unfeeling metal. And we're going to go ahead and roll and see what could she possibly pass on given to her from the gods of fate. And the answer, my friends. <gasps> Oh my goodness gracious, the answer uh, is antenna for weather prediction, which is new, uh, and actually Berina snout, which is amazing. Oh my gosh, if she could pass on Berina snout. So if any of her children mate with a Berina, then we would have a bunch of strength, strong voice, smelling, distasteful appearance. That's amazing. I think that Rihanna is thinking about how she could become strong enough, or her children, or her children's children, could become strong enough to dominate this island. So alright, they flutter their feathers at each other. Uh, Haril is flattered, uh, but not convinced. So let's see. So we're gonna have Sunny go ahead and exclaim that this is a wonderful place to raise a child. And Rihanna will be like, yes, I would be happy to help you out with that. Harriel might be a little impressed. Yay, there we go. All right, and we'll have him go ahead and help out with the rest to clear this area out so that we can figure out what's going on uh, until I need space in the tribe to have babies and then he's back out. All right, I think that takes care of everybody. It sure does. Let the days of mystery pass on. Oh, heck. All right, that's fine. Yes, I knew you were sick. Did we spread sickness to Almond? Okay, Almond has gotten sick. Uh, poor old, old girl Almond. That is one of the prices that come with having to watch over our babies though. I don't think she minds. I think she's just that kind of nicheling who's like, oh, well, it does happen. And then we do have a little sick baby over here too. But we also have the birds lurking overhead, so I don't want her to get eaten. Uh, all right, and we have two days left on Ivy's pregnancy. Let's have a little Iris come on down. I think we're gonna have uh, this crew try to continue to, I wish we could attack that bird. This crew continue to get rid of the bad termites, which I think very much amuses uh, Trico. And then we'll have Trico come over and we're gonna have him start clearing out some of the area around here so that we can see where they're nesting a little bit more and see if there's more of the fabled potato field. Uh, and then let's have Ivy come up here because I know there's some roots to dig. And Emmy, who we've been kind of waiting for Emmy to grow up so she could help out a little bit more, I think we'll go ahead and have her clear away some of the grasses too and claim this territory. All right, meanwhile, that is what Pierre is up to over here. I think he's staring with envy up at the big blue birds that he wishes he could fly like and potentially attack and bring down as food. And meanwhile, we're going to have Fox go ahead and gather up food here. Look at those birds. What do you guys think you're doing lurking over my nichelings? 
All right. Meanwhile, we have Mono. Okay, she's ready to give birth. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. She's ready to go ahead and give birth. So we're going to have her jump up. Uh, Ducky, can you actually get that, that bundle? Yay, good job, Ducky. All right. We're going to have her come up, and I kind of feel like I might have her call. She's only got four days left to live. All right, that's a risk because it could attract a strange nicheling or it could attract a Berina. But I want to let her do that call a couple times just because she's the leader. I feel like they, they should do that now and then. Uh, all right, meanwhile, let's come on down. And Sunny, <gasps> Sunny is ready to give birth. Yes. All right, that means we're going to have Hanyan jump over here, clear away one last bit of the grasses. And now we're going to chase him away because Sunny is ready to have a baby of her own. Um, we're going to have her just build a nest right freaking here. Why not? And then Rihanna, who has two more days left, is going to step over here and start clearing out more area so that they can raise a pair of nichelings together on the edge. So they've got each other's back as nest sisters. That takes care of everything there. All right! Mono, it's your very last baby! Oh my gosh! She has been such a strong and wonderful tribe leader. We escaped from the drama of the killer Berinas back here under her guidance. And we started really establishing ourselves over here thanks to her guidance. And now it's her final baby. <gasps> She's beautiful! Oh my gosh, look at her, you guys! <laughs> she has got anteater nose, she has got a wing, uh, she can get those termites, she can attack a little bit thanks to inheriting her mother's beautiful horns, she can collect some berries, she's got decent enough fertility. I love her! And she's got distasteful scent! Does she have- she's got the fluffy tail! Oh my word! Alright, little one, what are we gonna name you? I kind of want to name you after your mom, in a way. Um, but who was your grandma? Tatani, of course. Uh, so I think we're going to have the very, very last child of Mano, the long descendant of Tatani, who carries on the long snoot. We're going to end this little one. She really reminds me of a little cookie. Um, but the cookie tribe is, of course, another one of our amazing nicheling tribes. Totally unrelated. Um, let's see. I think we're going to go ahead and name you uh, Mono. Let's see. Tatani. Monta? No, let's, let's, let's name her. Um, hmm. 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 Oh no! <laughs> it's me. Okay. All right. That's it. We're we're just gonna go with something about her spots. So, um, Tati. We're gonna we're just gonna go with Tati. There we go. Because I really like the way that sounds, especially when when she's covered in little spots. It makes me think about cookies. Uh, also, we had another birth over here. I need to start pulling up your guys' name suggestions again. And we have little Meta, who happens to be extremely normal. She can crack things, attack things, collect things. She's basically a very like calm, normal nicheling. Didn't seem on the surface to inherit anything too exciting from her parents, but her genes and recessive genes are hidden. So who happens to know what mysteries hide within her? And we're going to name her Sunset because we have Sunny, and now we have her daughter, Sunset. Uh, and we're gonna need to make room for Rihanna to be able to go ahead and give birth tonight, which is gonna be kind of interesting. Um, so we'll have to keep our eyes out. Yeah, she won't be able to give birth tonight because we've got too many spots already stuffed full. Unless I wanna let Emmy wander around, which I just may. We'll have to think about that. But all right, so Mono has had her very last child. Oh my gosh. I really don't know how I feel about that. Like, I'm going to miss her a lot, um, knowing that she's towards the end days. Meanwhile, we're going to have Pierre continue to clear out some of this territory. And down here, we're going to have Trico do the same and possibly look for some healing fruit pretty soon. Uh, uh oh, the baby's unattended. The baby is unattended. There we go. Hide Iris next to her dad. 
Um, and I might let Emmy start free roaming. I mean, she's got a wing. Wing is, is, uh, we could always try to find her again, is the thing. So I'm kind of tempted to do that so we can see, like, what Ivy's next child is going to be. In fact, I think we'll, we'll do that. Emmy is a juvenile now, and normally we don't release the juveniles. But I think it's okay. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let Emmy kind of wander around. She's not gonna be able to go far. Uh, and that'll let us have Ivy's next child. And otherwise, I think we're gonna have Ducky gather up some nice berries. There we go. And he'll wander back and take care of his mate in just a second. Almond is going to continue to collect uh, delicious nuts to share with the whole tribe. And we're gonna have Mono. Oh, only three days left. <laughs> ah! And then everything changes. Everything changes. I think we're gonna have Mono wander away just a little bit. Almond doesn't have much life left either, so we need to pull somebody. Ducky! We need to pull somebody back over to keep an eye on the babies. But I think we're going to have Mono come and spend some time with her mate, wandering just at the very edges of their central territory, just to look over the land that she has defended her whole life. And then finally, we'll have Sunny come on over, very excited and proud, ready to watch over her baby too. And we'll have Rihanna. I think we'll have Rihanna drop her baby into the nest as soon as she can. But for now, she's content to go ahead, like this nest, and help clear their newfound territory that they've established. All right, there we go. Anything dramatic? I heard a growl! I heard a growl. Oh my. Oh, who's that? It's a heat-bodied nichling! A heat-bodied wandering rogue! And we have a barina. That just as I released, I can't believe it. I was like, oh, she'll be totally safe. And literally just as I released her, the poor child is now being chased down by a Barina. <sighs> All right, Pear, Trico, to the rescue. But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. If you could, do please leave a like for Mono and the amazing third generation that she has been able to give to the whims this time around. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.